Good evening everyone, it's David Schlotthauer here with a very detailed tropical update on Invest 92L as it is located just to the southwest of the Cabo Verde Islands off of Africa. We're going to be looking at that and how this could become a possible tropical storm or hurricane near the Leeward and Windward Islands over the next 5-7 to seven days. Now if you're new, please consider subscribing, hitting the like button, and sharing this video with their family and friends on social media. So here's a detailed look at the entire Atlantic satellite wide here provided by tropicaltidbits.com at levicowan.com. Very, very great website to look at satellite images currently. And we can see here is our tropical wave right here that has moved off of Africa very early this morning. And this while it's disorganized still, there is going to be some likelihood chances that this will make a run for a tropical depression, tropical storm, or if not, maybe a low-end hurricane as it passes just to the north and possibly impacting some of these uh, islands here, as such as the U.S. Virgin Islands, British Virgin Islands. But in the meantime, pretty quiet out here, a little bit of westerly shear cutting across the Caribbean as it tends to do this time of the year. But don't worry, we have a tropical wave on our hands to uh, track, and this could cause a little bit of problems for some of the islands here of the U.S. Brit British, including for portions of St. Lucia, as well as maybe perhaps uh, Dominica um, over the next five to seven days. Looking at the water vapor imagery, we can see some dry air out ahead of this, but since we do have a well-established outflow out in front of this, I don't think this is going to be uh, much of a concern in the short term. However, we have a trough of low pressure up here that is going to be dropping a little bit further south. And this might force some of that drier air in in the next five to seven days, which might put a cap on this system. We'll be looking at the models here to show you proof of that. When we now take a look at our National Hurricane Center graphics, there is a 70% chance, that's a high chance, for tropical development with Invest 92L. So again, we have our second Invest of the season here, and this one could make a run for a stronger one. And you can see the area highlighted here on the National Hurricane Center. There is red, and red means high. That means greater than 60% chance of tropical formation in the next um, seven days. Right now, currently, it's only at 30%, but don't worry, those chances too will be going up in the next couple of days. So now when we look at our latest GFS model, I always like looking at the model, and what you're looking at here is vorticity. How much spin is going on at 5,000 feet above the surface? So we're looking at the low levels here. Again, the atmosphere is not um, two-dimensional. It's three-dimensional. So you, you we're looking at different layers here. And so this is the lower one that I like to look at. And this is vorticity uh, in color coat with isobars here or the height lines and you get the wind barbs. Another way to see with what our air, uh, what our atmosphere is doing out ahead of 92L. So over the next um, 24 hours, we can see how this does become well established. This is by tomorrow early afternoon for Eastern time. And then by the time we go into day three, this is for June the 19th, Monday early afternoon. We've got a well established ridge up to the north here. This is going to be the primary steering future for 92L as it heads off towards the west at about 15 to 20 miles an hour. And notice how tight this is that's what we look for okay uh the vorticity how much spin there is in the atmosphere so if you see this then we have a tropical depression or a tropical storm and even a hurricane if it's strong enough so let's go down out to now day four we can see there's our system day five it's really slowing down a little bit because this ridge kind of falls apart it kind of gets squashed by um, some trophy weather traffic to the north, another trough over here. And so it really becomes to where, how this is gonna get steered, okay? So as we go to um, roughly about, this is about say seven or eight days out, uh, a very complex pattern. The ridge gets shunted off towards the northeast. We got another ridge that builds in across uh, right off the eastern seaboard and this thing is just stuck in between. 
It's about where this system will be in about seven or eight days and where this ridge is going to be. Because again, we want to um, see if this thing is going to actually get uh, snuck underneath this ridge and then actually get uh, to get further west. Right now, the latest GFS does not have that happening, and instead, it makes an escape route directly to the north, very not very close to Bermuda, but, you know, in striking distance, because if we look at previous model runs, we can see how this has trended further west within the last few runs. Also, definitely well stronger, too, possibly a strong hurricane here, perhaps right around day eight and day nine as this ridge is off to the east and this trough or this tropical storm or hurricane rounds the edge to this ridge and rounds off the steering flow that will likely be out of the south now when we look at our european model this is the euro model of 12z that was rendered today similar outcome here uh, on both of the global models so we have pretty good idea that this is going to organize fairly quickly Okay, uh, it helps when we have two models agreeing on the same thing versus one model. Again, steering flow, uh, steering ridge here at 5,000 feet. Uh, this ridge will continue to basically modulate the steering flow. So we are going to get this probably a little closer. So if we look at just how close this gets, yeah, this is really, really close. That's day eight and day nine. When we look at the GFS model. You can see how further east it is, probably because it samples this trough a little stronger and maybe there's a little bit of a more weaker uh, kind of slit here between the two ridges. This thing is likely to move north, vice versa. The European model really doesn't have much in the way of a trough here. Instead, more of an extension to this ridge at the 5,000 foot level. And so this system is able to move a little bit further to the west. And again, um, distance is gonna matter here, folks. I mean, if this gets any further west on the Euro, it's been quite consistent here. And just showing you, um, it hasn't changed very much between model runs. Um, if we go and look at yesterday's model run and today's model run, pretty much in the same area so again definitely um if you guys are living down here and watching this video make sure you share this with your family and friends because again this could still uh be um in a striking distance okay so now when we take a look here the european uh 850 millibar cyclonic vorticity and 500 millibar height along to go with our steering flow at 200 millibars so we're looking at basically four perimeters here which is quite awesome what levi cowan did so we can see there is our vorticity at about 850 millibars um, this is our 500 millibar ridge outlined here the 592 decameter ridge that is in place that is the primary steering feature with this system we saw it at 850 millibars we go forward here you can see how this ridge tries to build in unison with this system here and that's probably why the european model has this going a little further west than what the gfs model has it also um there's a tendency here when you get a ridge that builds out in front of this we get outflow that kind of circles uh, back in around this usually tends to help to kind of forward flank the system a little further west as we can see here so going forward uh, we can see that we do have a trough here eventually that uh, moves into the picture. Uh, we have a, a little bit of a, a mid-level ridge over here. We have another kind of an extension to the ridge over here. So very complex pattern. So going forward, um, that trough is too weak. It's probably going to be too far north too to capture that. But eventually the trough that does dip out of the eastern seaboard might come far south enough to where it can capture where we have an edge to the height contour here where the system is able to kind of get steered off to the north and kind of round the western or yeah the, the western flank of that mid-level ridge that's in place again there's a lot of discrepancy between the model guidance so again that's why we make these videos on a daily basis and if i wasn't working we would probably be doing two videos a day on this so when we look at the um, moisture plot here so we can see 
there is a lot of moisture with this pocket, this wave pocket here. We've got the drier air that I was telling you about. If we go and look at the water vapor, that's this gray area. So well modeled here on the Euro. Uh, when we go forward in the next, say, a uh, couple of days, there is our wave pocket there. Pretty well moist here. Not really dry air immediately to the north. That would be likely to get shunted southward due to the shear and get it kind of um, ingested into the circulation. So the ending result here is if we go forward, we have a system that really uh, is able to bonify. We got a nice moisture pocket, drier air to the north here. So now a little bit of uncertainty again. We're going to see the system probably oscillate. There's some model um, kind of model runs that show it's stronger than others. That's because, again, this is a complex environment. We do have shear that is going to be increasing out of the west eventually. We're having some dry air here in the way. So going forward, you can see um, as we go out to Friday morning next week, we have a tilted vortex. You can see the moisture plot here. Got some drier air that kind of tries to wrap in around. You don't want a system in this environment. If you want strengthening, if you want to see heavy rainfall um, over areas that need it, yeah, you're going to need a well-stacked vortex here, not shear that will likely shunt the deep convection and its moisture offset from the center. So if we actually look here, if we do a sounding uh, plot, we can actually see that there is shear here, 27 knots. That's pretty strong. And it is well seen here on the moisture plot too, showing you that there is a misaligned vortex. The mid-level center is slightly offset from the actual low-level center, which you see here. But if it finds itself in a better environment, maybe with this trough that is going to be encroaching, we're probably going to change the overall shear vector more out of the south, and the steering flow will be well aligned with that. So we might be able to get this vortex underneath that moist pocket again, and it might be able to re-intensify fairly quickly if it's able to survive the hostile conditions on the approach here to the Leeward and Windward Islands. But again, that is to be announced at the moment. What is very certain here, when we take a look at our upper ocean heat content, there's a lot of heat content out ahead of this. So if we draw an orange line here, this is how our storm is going to be moving, okay? And so if you follow my arrows here, be a lot of upper ocean heat content that the system is going to be moving into, which is jet fuel for hurricanes. And so with a lighter shear, I guess about five to 10, maybe 15 knots, and then it increases to 20 knots, be a matter of how it does in the next couple of days. If it's able to stack that vortex quick enough, because a stronger system, and if the vortex is uh, able to be wide enough, it might be able to be resistant against that 30 knot shear that comes out of the southwest, which could be a pretty big troublemaker when it comes to these systems on approach to some of these islands here in the Caribbean. So again, stay up to date when it comes to this um output all right so as again we have a 60 to 70 percent chance of tropical formation with 92 l again this could be a pretty big impact um, concern here for some of the islands make sure you stay up to date on my youtube channel by subscribing sharing and also liking you can only get updates here as accurate as i can make them um, if you do show your awesome support well that's going to do it with this video everyone thank you all for watching